Nearly three years ago, I reviewed this little USB hub and NVMe enclosure from Acasis, and it skyrocketed to become the third most viewed and liked video on the channel. So when Acasis reached out and asked if I wanted to check out their brand new Thunderbolt hub and enclosure, I said, send it, and here it is. Let's check it out. Hey guys, CJ here with Elevated Systems. You might have noticed that over the past few years, portable devices have become slimmer, lighter, and more portable, which is fantastic. However, this often means sacrificing port selection, making dongles, docks, and hubs essential for expandability. One of the best USB hubs I've used in recent years is the Acasis 10-in-1 USB 3.2 hub. It pretty much offers everything you need. Ethernet and display ports, full-size micro SD card readers, 10 gigabit type C and type A ports, a five gigabit type A port, and of course, an NVMe SSD bay. Plus, with an appropriate type C power supply, it provides a one wire connection solution for your device. You can check out my full review of this hub, but spoiler alert, its two limitations are that it gets extremely hot and you're limited to a theoretical maximum of 10 gigabits per second drive speeds. With most laptops now offering Thunderbolt or USB 4 with up to 40 gigabit per second speeds, it's time for an upgrade. So today, we're going to see if the Acasis TBU405 Plus Thunderbolt 3 is a worthy upgrade. We'll unbox it, see what it comes with, go over its specs and features, test it on both a Windows laptop and my MacBook, and ultimately determine if it's a solid value. The unboxing experience was pretty straightforward. Sliding the box open, the docking station sits on top cradled in cardstock inside a plastic bag. Underneath, we have a 50 centimeter Thunderbolt 3 cable and a couple of thermal pads and rubber fasteners plugs for the SSD installation. Just like the older USB docking station, there's no power supply included with the Thunderbolt dock. Checking out the specs and features, the first thing to notice is the overall size of the dock. While it's pretty compact for a Thunderbolt device, it's slightly larger than its USB counterpart, measuring in at 110 millimeters long, 66 millimeters wide, and 25 millimeters tall. For port selection, we have two 10 gigabit type A ports on the front and two display port 1.4 ports on the left side, allowing for a single 8K 60 Hertz external display or up to two 4K 120 Hertz displays. On the right, there's a single 10 gigabit type C port. On the back, we have our 40 gigabit Thunderbolt 3 port and a five volt three amp USB power input. Finally, flipping the unit over, we see a 5 volt 25 millimeter fan embedded in the bottom panel for active cooling. This panel pops off to reveal the PCIe Gen 3 M.2 NVMe bay, which supports up to an 8 terabyte SSD. A neat feature of this active cooling is that the fan is powered through a pogo pin connector. Installing the SSD is also tool free using the included rubber fasteners. However, you are limited to SSDs under four millimeters thick, so nothing with an included heat sink. This is a PCIe Gen 3 interface, so there isn't really a benefit to installing faster, hotter Gen 4 SSDs. Plus, you already have active cooling. If we tear down the cooler to get a look at it, we see the 25 millimeter blower style fan, which only blows air through one side of the cooling fins. You'll also notice this is a three wire DC fan, but the tachometer wire is not connected as there's only pogo pins for the voltage and ground wires. This means the hub constantly provides the full five volts of power to the fan, which spins at full speed continuously. This also means it's loud from the moment you plug the hub in. That is probably my biggest issue with the device. Having a docking station that's louder than my laptop is not great. Now, I typically hold the cons until the end of the review, but since I started, let's look at the next big issue, port selection. 
We've gone from a 10-in-1 device to a 6-in-1 device, losing SD card readers, a headset jack, and a big one, in my opinion, an Ethernet port. We've also lost the one-wire docking solution, as the docking station is actually powered by the device and not the other way around. The dock draws a steady 5 volts from the laptop, even when connected to an external 5 volt power supply. So this means you'll have to keep your laptop plugged into its own power supply pretty much all the time. Jumping into the docking station performance, one of the big upgrades is the inclusion of two DisplayPort 1.4 outputs. Now, I don't have 8K monitors to test on, so I'll have to take their word on it that it works. However, it is a Thunderbolt 3 and DisplayPort 1.4 spec and a capability of the Intel JHL7440 Thunderbolt 3 controller this device uses. I can say that it easily drives two 4K 60Hz displays on an AMD USB 4 laptop, on an Intel Thunderbolt 4 laptop, and on an M1 Pro MacBook Pro. There are downsides to this, which we'll get into shortly. First, let's take a look at the SSD speeds. On an NVMe Gen 3x4 connection, we theoretically have max speeds of about 31.5 gigabits per second, which is perfect for a 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt connection. Doing the math, we should theoretically have close to 4,000 megabytes per second SSD read and write speeds, but realistically, actual speeds are much lower due to latency, efficiency issues, and protocol overheads. Therefore, PCI Gen 3 to Thunderbolt 3 speeds realistically are closer to around 25 to 28 gigabits per second, or maybe 3,500 megabytes per second. This is perfect as most Gen 3 NVMe drives have average sequential read-write speeds of 2,500 to 3,500 megabytes per second and average sequential write speeds of 1,800 to 3,000 megabytes per second. I went with a Crucial P3 SSD for testing with read write speeds of 3,500 and 3,000 megabytes per second respectively. I started my testing on my AMD Ryzen 7000 series laptop, which has USB 4, not Thunderbolt, and right off the bat, I ran into some issues. I use Blackmagic Disk Speed Test as it gives me a real world look at drive speeds. While the read speeds looked pretty good at nearly 2400 megabytes per second, write speeds were significantly low at only 600 megabytes per second. Crystal Disk Mark was actually worse with sequential write speeds below 500. The problem is while many USB 4 hosts include the full Thunderbolt 3 protocol, not all do. While USB 4 and Thunderbolt specifications are the same, implementation is not. So the two aren't always fully compatible, which is the case with my USB 4 enabled Ryzen 7 7840U Framework 13 and the Acasis Thunderbolt dock. Some things work, such as the dual 4K display output, but some things don't, like some poor write speeds and none of the USB 3.2 ports recognize my internal SSDs or thumb drives. Swapping my 12th gen Intel Thunderbolt 4 enabled mainboard into the laptop didn't change the disk speed much. A slight bump up on write, but a slight bump down on read. However, on the Thunderbolt 4 connection, the hub was fully functional. Both display ports worked and the three USB 3.2 ports functioned. I did the usual speed test. Read and write speeds of my Samsung T7 were about 100 megabytes per second slower connected through the cases compared to the external SSD connected directly to the laptop. I could transfer files between the T7 and the Crucial Pre 3 and to USB flash drives plugged into the front USB-A ports. However, as I got all the ports connected, I found another issue. With one or two of the 4K 60Hz displays connected to the docking station, the SSD speeds took a significant hit. Concerning the speeds, I began to think my SSD was bad, even though it's brand new. I even reformatted it a couple times. However, once I plugged the docking station into my backbook, I was assured it was fine as I finally saw the read and write speeds I was expecting over 2200 megabytes per second. Everything was functional with the dock on the MacBook and all the port speeds of connected devices were just slightly lower than the devices connected directly to the MacBook. However, again, we have a significant SSD speed drop when we connect external displays. Now, just for those curious, this is not improved by connecting the 5 volt supplemental power. In fact, the supplemental power doesn't provide 
any power to the dock while it's plugged into a laptop. The supplemental power doesn't even provide power to the dock or to a low power device like my iPhone when connected. In fact, the only time the supplemental power is even used is if the Thunderbolt cable is disconnected from a host device. So really, what's the point? But now without using supplemental power and with active cooling, the dock stays much cooler than its predecessor. To test temperatures, I connected both 4K displays, benchmarked the internal SSD, and streamed a 4K movie from the connected Samsung T7. Even in a warm office, the dock surface temperature maxed out at just 36 degrees Celsius, or about nine degrees above ambient. The unified temperature of my Crucial P3 never rose above 60 degrees Celsius. Acasis upgraded the TBU405 Plus with a fan to address heat complaints. However, while actively reading and writing files to and from the SSD, the SSD temperature remained around 41 degrees with a unified temperature of just 54 degrees. During the test, I disconnected the fan and used just the metal base as a passive heat sink. This caused the SSD temperatures to increase by only one degree with a three degree rise in the unified temperature. Honestly, a Gen 3 SSD operating at full Gen 3 speeds doesn't even need active cooling. A hot Gen 4 drive might benefit from it, but there's no need to put a Gen 4 SSD in this enclosure. It's a Gen 3 PCIe interface, and it isn't even fully utilizing that Gen 3 bandwidth. While a Gen 4 SSD may provide slightly faster speeds due to newer controllers and faster cache, the gains are minimal compared to the added heat, cost, and noise. My best advice is to go with an affordable Gen 3 SSD and disconnect the fan. A small piece of tape works great. The passive cooling of the metal base is enough. Active cooling isn't even needed for the hub itself since it only runs on five volt power and none of the control chips or SMDs inside run very hot at all. So let's summarize. The Acasis TBU405 Plus offers solid performance, more so on Mac than on PC, which probably isn't by accident as MacBooks are typically more in need of external storage and port expandability solutions. Now, I did off camera go back and test basically all the NVMe SSDs I have on hand, and I did see some like this Gen 4 4 terabyte drive hit write speeds of over a thousand megabytes per second on the Thunderbolt PC, but again, every one of them was much faster on my MacBook. We also need to consider compatibility issues on some USB 4 Windows laptops, which can affect write speeds and USB port functionality. The dual DisplayPort 1.4 outputs handle high resolution displays effortlessly, but that functionality does come at the cost of storage speeds. The active cooling system keeps temperatures in check, but honestly, a Gen 3 SSD doesn't even need it, and the fan is just loud. Personally, the lack of port selection, specifically Ethernet and SD card readers, and the inability to provide power for a single cable solution make this a poor docking station solution. Despite the lower USB speeds, I still prefer the versatility of the Acasis 10-in-1. However, at just $129, for someone, specifically a Mac user, looking for a very portable and fast NVMe external storage solution with some extra ports and occasional external displays, it's a pretty good value. And that's it for today's review of the Acasis TBU405 Plus. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming tech reviews and DIYs. I'd love to hear your comments and thoughts in the comments below. Have you used any of these Thunderbolt hubs and what's your experience been like? Also, check in the links in the description for more details and where you can buy these Acasis hubs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.